We good? Okay, here we go. Um, greetings and um, welcome to everyone. Um, I call to order the November meeting of the Florence um, Planning Commission, Florence City Planning Commission. Uh, the commissioners are online via Zoom. Um, we have our vice chair here, uh, Mr. Owens. Uh, he does have um, uh, a couple of um, people in the audience that are uh, affected in case there are questions. But um, from that standpoint, I'd like to start with uh, the first item on the agenda, which is to approve uh, last month's minutes. Uh, the commissioners have received their packets. And Ms. Elaine, by the way, we got them really early this time. Uh, and <laughs> there you go. Um, and I would like to call for a motion if there are not any changes, corrections, or suggestions. Move we approve the minutes. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. Um, second. Right. I have a second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to approve as submitted. Uh, is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 It is 100% unanimous. Thank you. Um, the next item on the agenda is PC 2020-27. Uh, Ms. Elaine, if you'll do the staff report, please. And good yes, evening. Sir. I just realized, I think this is the first time we've had full um, planning commission. Wow. Awesome. So. Uh, can the commissioners hear Ms. Elaine? Barely. Yes. I can hear. Okay. All right. This request is to... Yeah, I can hear. And zone RG3, um, approximately 15 acres of a parcel that is located at the intersection of Pisgah Road and West Sumter Street as shown on the vicinity map there. Um, the road on the left is North Ebenezer Road. The city limits are just to the south of this parcel on Sumter Street. Um, it's the new Cedar Crest, um, future Cedar Crest subdivision. This is a, a closer up look. The entire parcel does include the part of to the west of the new um, Pisgah Road there that accesses Sumter Street, but that part is not being included for the zoning. And right now the zoning across the street is RG3 and that is the same zoning that the applicants are requesting. And the future land use for the entire area, even though most of it's in a county, it is for uh, residential suburban development. These are some site photos. It's a vacant lot at the time at this time. And um, the engineering department has determined that we will be able to provide uh, water and sewer through the Cedar Crest subdivision on the south side. And um, that we approve of the um, application for annexation and the zoning. So that concludes staff's report. Thank you, Ms. Lane. I have a question. What is a little cutout in there? What is that? That is that just that section of where they put the new Pisgah Road. I don't know if you're familiar with it. It used to all come um, where it shows on there, but they put a new section in there. And so it's only about three acres and they have not used that as part of their request. Okay. Uh, do any of the commissioners have questions for staff? Hearing none, I will open the public hearing portion of this. I uh, invite, uh, do we have any guests, Mr. Dudley? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. And if, if we did, they would only be via this Zoom. Is that correct? Yes. That's correct. The applicants did um, say they would be here on Zoom, so I'm, unless they were going with the 630, but I told them 6. So. Okay. I'm, I'm going to ask again, is there anyone that would like to speak on behalf or against this request? Hearing none, I will close the public hearing portion of this and call for a motion. I'll move to approve. We recommend approval of the applicant's request. Uh, Mr. Owens has um, made a motion to approve as requested. Is there a second? Second. I have a second. Um, is there any discussion? I have a second and I'm, I have a motion and a second to approve as submitted. Uh, there is no discussion. I will call for the motion. I call for the vote. All those in favor? Uh, say aye. 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 And like signs, nay. 
and the and the like and the eyes have it. All right, that takes us to the next item, <clears throat> which is PC 2020-28, and another familiar face, Mr. Lane. Mr. Chairman, uh, yes. um, due to a conflict of interest I have in this agenda, I don't have to recuse myself. I understand completely. If you'll have a seat, thank you. Um, I don't know if the commissioners heard that. Um, Mr. Owens yeah. um, is uh, recusing himself, and um, we also have um, another member of his um, development team, um, another Mr. Owens, and we have Mr. Weaver here too, in case any of the commissioners, Mr. Weaver being the engineer um, on this project. Um, so I'll ask Ms. Elaine to give the staff report, please. Thank you. Um, if you recall, a year ago, um, the annexation request was made to annex uh, this section of uh, property off of Southboro Road. And this is, they're coming back now with the sketch plan request. And it involves the section that is in blue on your vicinity map. And then here in the um, white. <coughs> it's approximately 51 acres and it is zoned um, rural, uh, residential urban which does allow for a higher density of single family residential development. This is the future land use. It is um, the future land use recommends residential suburban. And as you can see, it is it's surrounded by county properties and they are zoned neighborhood uh, conservation. Um, this is, is falling underneath the unique development section of the unified development ordinance. Um, and that allows the planning commission to apply alternative development standards. Um, if you find that a property, um, that a proposed development will benefit the city, that it is unique, creative, and of a quality standard, thereby warranting a more flexible approach to the development standards to meet the goals of the um, applicant. And when in the judgment of the planning commission, such developments provide adequate public spaces, traffic circulation, recreation, light, air, and service needs when fully developed and populated, and which also provides such covenants, conditions, and restrictions or other legal provisions as to assure conformity to an achievement of the spirit and intent of the Unified Development Ordinance, the Planning Commission may approve special variations from the standards of the code. So that all that is to say that um, these are the standards that the applicant is applying for. So they're, they're, it's going to look a little bit different than an average sketch plan. So the applicant is proposing these following alternative standards to guide the character of the development. Um, his goal is to make it more of a traditional neighborhood under the unique development provision of the um, ordinance. And the uh, alternative standards that he is requesting um, are a reduced front setback. Uh, in the RU, the front setback is supposed to be 15 feet. He is asking for five feet or um, there are 21 lots that are labeled as patio homes. Those are lots number one through 21. And then the remainder of the lots, instead of the 15, he would like them to be eight feet instead of the 15. And the rest of those, he would like to be able to encroach to within zero feet, to, so to the front property line with porches, steps, and other such um, encroachments. He would like to repeat the rear setback on the lots that are bordered in the rear by an alley or the golf course from 20 feet to three feet and reduce rear setbacks on lots bordering charter subdivision from 20 feet to 10 feet. Um, allow lots 180 through 192, which are in the lower right corner as you're looking at the sketch plan for cottage style development. And then to provide for um, traffic calming and a sense of enclosure throughout the development, he would like to reduce the right of way and pavement width on streets with one way traffic to 14 feet, uh, reduce the pavement widths on streets with two way traffic from 24 to 22 feet and allow a dead end street, which is the main road in Dever Drive, to be longer than 400 feet, which is the normal and um, increase the maximum building coverage from 50% for single family detached houses and 60% for patio houses to 80%. So basically what he is requesting is a more compact enclosed development 
um, where the houses go right up to the edge of the street so the neighbors can see each other and um, be more neighbor friendly and um, to accommodate those short, smaller setbacks, you would need to cover the lots more than um, more than the 50 or 60 percent that's normally required. Um, the fire marshal has looked at this. He doesn't have a problem with the um, dead end street being 400 feet because there is a turnaround provided at the end. And he is also all right with the 14 foot width on the one way street, as long as there's no on, on street parking. And every parcel has to show that it does provide uh, at least two parking spaces off, on site and off street. Um, and then the cottages in the corner there do provide a little, they have their own parking space off street. So those are the main, um, or those are the alternative standards that the developer is proposing in order to accomplish his goal of having this particular character for this neighborhood. Um, here is the sketch plan, um, and then I also have a close-up. This is lots 1 through 21. These are the patio homes, and they'll have access uh, to the rear on an alley. As you can see, there'll be alleys that go all the way around behind these lots. And um, then the lots 180 through 192, the cottage lots, as you can see, they do have a shared parking lot. And those cottages will be uh, typically less than a thousand square feet for the first floor. So they've got a small, much smaller footprint than the other houses. And this is a site photo. The entire parcel is still undeveloped at this time. And that concludes staff's report. Thank you. Uh, do any of the commissioners have questions for staff? Um, I have one question. How, how many cars can be parked in that cottage area? I believe it has to provide at least two spots per unit. Even in the cottage area with the common parking lot. All right, Charles, I see you have a question. I got a question. Okay, yes, please. Uh, that, that 190 lot in the corner. Yes, if that's 190 lots. Okay, that's, I, I, I'm talking about that lot number 190. Isn't that what it is? Yes, the cottage lots. Go back to the, go back to drawing. Yeah. Where you have that arrow that's got that with, with 190, 189. Are those lots, those, those that, that development there, I'm so I'm so skeptical about a person looking straight at me coming in there. I always got that since we had the incident one time of people coming in, they had a direct shot to the person coming into the, into the development. And then I'm talking. I want to talk about a date in lot. How many interests are you going to have into there? Uh, first of all, is this Mr. Bacode or Mr. Moses talking? Moses. Mr. Moses, um, I'm going to ask that you speak up. I think staff. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, thing, but um, did staff understand? Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. There can are can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yeah, we hear you fine now. They're going to okay. answer your question right now. Okay. It was the, the there was one night we had the one night. But that's what I'm talking about, right in that curve back. Where right. is it? See, it was 190 and 189 right close to each other. That corner, that lot right there, it's, it's going to be a, a house or anything into that circle that they in there. You see the one, 190 and 189. Yes, and they've got a parking area in front of them. That's a parking area right there? Yes, sir. Okay, and there's going to be a houses on the, the kind of houses. Um, the small houses will be circling that parking area. Come again now. It'll be kind of like a quad um, feel to it. They'll be on three sides of that parking area. It's just that small entrance to the parking lot. Okay, it's going to be development on both sides of that corner. Are you just one going to be in the middle? 
Wrap it that square. Is it gonna be a house in, in between there? Of how it's gonna be developed? Um, Miss, Mr. Moses, I think it, it's oops. The, the way it'll be developed is each each one of those lot numbers will be a single cottage style development. And any of that blank space that's off the road will be a combination of a courtyard and parking space. He'll, he'll have to accommodate parking at the rate of, of two parking spaces per unit. And then the leftover would be landscape and, and courtyard space. So, so I think it's, it, I mean, it'll be laid out just like you see it, but it'll be its own little, I, I guess, cottage style community that's, that's within the development. Mm -hmm. And the, where's this dead, dead end you're talking about? How many, uh, first thing, let's talk about how many inches is going to be into that uh, development? Sure. Here, here's so do you go to go to a, a major? I'm talking to a major road. Sure. Can let's see? Can you see my cursor moving around there? Yeah, I see it. Okay. Here, this is going to be the main entrance right here off of Southboro. Mm -hmm. And there will also be another entrance that comes in off of out of Westbrook across the golf course. So th this road here will connect as well. So they'll, they'll, they'll essentially be two points of connectivity in the neighborhood. And then the, the dead end portion, it, it really ends in a loop and, and less of a dead end where, where you have this kind of straightaway through here. That, in that circle that you're talking about? Yeah, yes, sir. The, de the dead end will be right down here and, and it'll actually end in a loop drive right down here. It'll, it'll terminate into a one-way drive that that loops up at this top end and that's kind of the back of the subdivision okay and this that in that circle there what's going to be in that circle um that that'll be hold on my first the, the, the circle there will be i mean that that will be a cul-de-sac and it'll facilitate the turnaround of fire trucks and emergency vehicles and and anyone that okay it's no it's no development back there that's what we're trying to tell would you repeat that again? That. There's no, there's no development down there by the circle. No, None at all. No development behind the circle. It, it drops off into pretty wet area back there. Okay. Go to wetland. That's what you're trying to tell me. Great questions, by the way, Mr. Moses. Mm -hmm. um, if there are not any other questions uh, from the commissioners. Um, I do have a point of order I'd like to discuss with Mr. Billy just one second if y'all could um, appease me on that. Uh, thank you. Um, Mr. Dudley, as always, um, comes in with the wisdom at the right time. Um, the question that I had, um, as far as the point of order, was during a public hearing, um, Mr. Owens recused himself, and legally he's not allowed to get up and make comment or uh, discuss. This is not a public hearing. This is a sketch plan review. So um, I invite um, Mr. Owens, Commissioner Owens, if you'd like to come up and, and have a few comments or make a few statements. Sure, yeah, and I uh, appreciate you allowing me off to do it. Okay, yeah, why don't you come up to this, or oh, which one, does this one live as well? Um, it'd probably be easier. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, can everybody hear me okay? Mm -hmm. The other commissioners hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Well, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank you 
for your time and, and, uh, and the other commissioners for their time and service to the city. The tireless thank you this job to get done. Keep it going. Keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm butting everybody up. Um, you know, for the record, my name is Derek Owens. I am the builder and developer here in town. I've served on the city planning commission for, for quite some time now. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm here in the capacity as representative for the developer or the owner, which is Madison Floyd Investments. And so, um, and so what I'd like to do is just take a minute to, uh, to kind of talk you through some of our, um, some of our design principles and, and some of the decision-making that drove us to, to this development project. First, I, I thought it'd be interesting to share a little bit of history on, on this on this piece of property. Many, many years ago, there's some gentlemen here in town who were who were entrepreneurs, developers, and builders, and they they purchased this property uh, on South Pearl Road, which was just a bunch of, of farmland and timberland back then, with the vision of building a golf course. And, and, and so what they did, they purchased the property, they granted the golf course portion of the property to the Goodson family in Darlington with the, with the caveat that they develop a golf course. And so the result of that was, you know, it, it increased their property value significantly. And so there were basically three phases um, of this project. Uh, the, the other two phases of which have been developed some time ago, and, and Bob Weaver is here, he could, he could speak to that as well. But but so basically what we're doing, you know, the, the guys who started that, that project, you know, they, look, time takes its toll on us all. They've all gotten older and, and wiser and, and less uh, risky in their endeavors. And so they just kind of aged out and didn't have any interest in pursuing this final phase of development. And, and so you know, that's, that's where we uh, enter the picture. And so we acquired the property and, and um, and decided to undertake this development project and complete what was intended out there for so long we've done. So uh, Elaine did such a good job of articulating, you know, really the uh, unique development um, um, section of the uh, unified development ordinance, which is kind of that, that's the spirit in which we request our sketch plan approval and and the variances associated with it. And in addition to the unique, the unique development ordinance provision in the UDO, uh, it's really supported saying. very well by our comp plan, which, which I, I don't want to bore everybody or waste their time, but I will read that in just a little bit. Um, Elaine did such a good job with the UDO, I'm not going to rehash that, but I do want to share. Um, sort of the supporting documentation from our comp plan. Um, if, you, if you look, as I talk, if you look at that, um, that sketch plan there, you'll see there's a green space kind of centrally located in the neighborhood that it, it will ultimately have a clubhouse and a swimming pool uh, for the residents to enjoy. In, in referencing our comp plan under section 5.13 quality neighborhood design, Actually, the first point there was that a quality neighborhood would have a focal point, a, a park, a central green, um, and that's exactly what we've included there to meet that that um, that requirement. Of equal importance is pedestrian. Or there, there is equal importance given to pedestrian and vehicular circulation. We've done that. We, we made various requests for narrow pavement widths. We've included sidewalks on both sides of the street, including that central green is a component to that. Uh, we have traffic calming devices uh, through a couple of bulb outs on the street. Um, the one-way one uh, streets that we've included are traffic calmers as well, promoting safer, uh, more Walker friendly environment. We, uh, the third point under quality neighborhood design our comp plan was a variety of dwelling types. We have basically four housing types in this neighborhood as Elaine mentioned. We have a patio home, we have what we call cottages, and then we have um, 
some rear loaded houses, which are which are houses that are accessed by car only from a rear loaded garage. And then we have what we call all the yard homes, which are you know kind of more traditionally situated house on a lot. And, and these these housing types really are to appeal to you know young families with children, singles, couples, and and elderly folks who you know who seek a smaller home in a nice neighborhood, but still desire to maintain their independence. Um, good street layouts, appealing streetscapes, all these things are mentioned in the comp plan, which we worked very hard to incorporate through this uh, provision for unique development. And the way that we sought to achieve all these goals is through, as Elaine mentioned, something called traditional de design development principles. And, and these, um, these design principles really are just to kind of elevate the quality of development in terms of uh, the design, create a more human scale environment that, that encourages walkability and encourages uh, safer neighborhoods, more eyes on the street, the use of higher quality building materials, um, evokes a sense of enclosure along the streetscape, and generally, you know, I would say that by saying that um, the traditional labor development design just yields a better built result. And so, you know, with that, I would entertain any questions or comments that the commissioners may have, anything I could do to clarify the understanding of our plan. Thank you, Mr. Owens. I, I noticed that we have two additional guests. Um, Mr. Hendrick, is that you? That's me. Absolutely. How are you? I saw Mr. Pinkley on there earlier. I don't know if he's, yeah, he's still with us. Are y'all uh, for this second item on the agenda or are y'all part of the first item which had a public hearing? We are on the second Wait. item, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Absolutely. Um, well, I, if, so if I understood well, right. Go ahead, Mr. Pinkley. Um, I may be corrected. I think we were on the South Pearl and I think that y'all have already I'm sorry, we were on the um, West Fisca Sumter Street. And Sumter. And y'all, I think y'all have already approved that one, have you? We have. Right. So, G Greg and I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that, Thank, you're going to have a pretty, you very high, pretty high fine. I mean, uh, charge for that little bit of time you spent on that that project right there, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that, that makes our. You know, we're, that we makes our job easier. I said six thirty instead of six, and I so I, I, I apologize. Oh goodness. Okay. Uh, but y'all did a very good job. Thank you. <laughs> good seeing you. Good Thank y'all. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm sure thank y'all for uh, taking your business. More, if I can add one more comment that was pointed out to me, we we did take the time last week to meet with the Westbrook Neighborhood Homeowners Association. And we took our sketch plans with those folks and many of them turned out here for our uh, annexation request. But I met with our HOA, which was a small group, but, but it was, the plan was very, uh, you know, well received by the folks that were there. They, they expressed interest in what we were doing and appreciation for taking the high quality development. Some of the folks were even interested in the cottages for, you know, for the purchase we intended to house some elderly folks. So. Just want to share that, that it was well received by the Westbrook HOA. Excellent. All right, Commissioner, just uh, back in your lap. Are there any um, questions for Mr. Uh, they, they never, he never answered my question. Okay, he, give us that question again, Mr. Moses. Uh, we'll go back to your sketch back again. It's about, I'm talking about your interest, your dead end, and those corner lots. Are they going to be development in the corner lot? I'm thinking about the incident we had in Florence. It always comes to my mind when the person got a dead shot to the end of um, the development and how many uh, interests you have in there also. So to be more than one way in and, and one way out. I think you're talking about business cars. No. Yeah, we had the business to refer to. Beg pardon? He said he's asked if you're referring to vintage place, huh? vintage place. Referring to vintage place in the shooting. Right, 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 right. And and then it, just a direct shot 
to anyone coming into a development. And they are looking at your corner lot, that corner section there with that in between the 180, 190 mm -hmm. and the 189. Uh, that's going to be a development right in that dead end spot there. Yeah, so the best way I can describe that thing is probably not very well represented in two dimension on drawing, but it's really, really, uh, it's not, it, it would be more like what our unified development ordinance refers to as a cluster housing development, which is, which is. A, I understand, a, I understand, I understand, but I, I, the only thing I'm asking you about the interest and a dead end shot at the a lot and that curb you talk about you said that, that curb go to a wetland that's what you say the circle was was for i'm sorry it's hard it, I, I don't have good audio here it's hard okay well, let me um let me tell you what i think bob's going to address this mr moses and, and he's had this question come up before is he's concerned about the vulnerability of someone having that long straight angle. Right. Uh, and is there gonna be housing on the back side of the cul-de-sac where someone can have that clear shot as everybody comes in? I don't think we can protect every neighborhood from that type of event, but he uh, is bringing it up with concern. And I don't know how you can address it or how um, yeah, I'll, I'll, we can address it. I, I appreciate your concern. I, you know, I, I don't really have any, any good answer for that. I mean, you know, I, I don't want to digress or go in the rabbit hole too far, but you know, we live in a fallen world in my humble view, and we can't predict all the bad things that might happen and, and you know, or, or foresee how somebody might manipulate a situation to to bad ends. And so yeah, but, we do the best we can. Our my my answer to that would be that this kind of development encourages uh a lot of activity on streets, which means there's more eyes on the streets, which means that, you know, and our hope, it would be that somebody recognizes early on when there's a bad character or a bad actor in the room and is able to do something about that before we have an incident like that. But that's, that's really about all I could, could respond and say. Uh, right. Mr. Moses, I'm gonna uh, ask um, Engineer Weaver to come up and address that. He is standing at the podium and he'll, you will mention that as well, Mr. Weaver. Yes, sir. Um, I think Mr. I'm Bob Weaver. Yes. Can I take this on, please? I think Mr. Moses might be thinking this is a dead end road in the corner, but it's not. This is a continuous road that feeds both directions. It, it's hard to see on a little small screen, but it's a continuous road. There's two ways in and out to this corner. Okay. I just want to make sure that was clear. All right. That's it. You know, Does that satisfy you? But the 189, the 190 and the 189, that's what I'm looking at. It's a corner, it's a corner spot there. Branch off to the corner. And then, then you have, and then you got the circle a little further down. Now, uh, Mr. Weaver is saying it's not a cul-de-sac, it's a through road. Um, the, the fire department's going to use it as a cul-de-sac, but it is a circular road that will have two-way traffic going around that cul-de-sac. It's, it's not a cul-de-sac. It's a 90-degree turn I'm sorry. road to slow traffic down, but you can still turn it with a fire truck. That's called Endeavor, Endeavor Drive. Can you see Endeavor Drive on your drawing, Mr. Mosey? No, I'm not talking about Endeavor Drive. The, the little small pocket up in there is like a, like a little, almost like a townhome development. It's very small, but you have a parking lot. It's not like Vintage Place where you have a dead end street and somebody's in the top of a house. You know, it's, yeah. this is a different, it's kind of like Wren Creek or something. I can't yeah. have off Cashel Drive if you know where I'm talking about. I do. This is a very small. <coughs> If these are single story homes or two story, they could be either one, but they're very small cottages. The lots are only 23 feet wide in here. Very, very small. Mr. Moser, we're getting pretty encouraged that that um, is not identical to vintage. And um, uh, I want you to be comfortable with that. But um, the engineer is saying that it's, it's not that situation. 
Well, I'm saying that they before they uh, develop it more than what it is, they should come back and I would like to have an on-site view of that that corner spot and see the see before uh, because it, it's a it don't look like to me it just square off. That's what I'm looking. At. I'm not, I'm not, I'm talking about the circle also, but I'm also I'm also talking about right at the bottom of the. Trying to, I can't read this on here. What do you call it? Brockton Land, you see that? And you come on down where it's square off. And Mr. Moses, this is a sketch plan. So for you to have an on site picture of this, it's either going to have to be developed or they're going to have to um, do some kind of 3D imagery, I guess. I mean, I, I don't. Well, they can come back with us and show us exactly how it's going to look. Am I right or wrong? That's what the plan is. Before they build it, you know, this go, right there, that's where you are at. That's what I'm concerned about, right there. Can you enlarge and highlight that area, Mrs. Vernon? I might be the only one concerned about it, but I'm just thinking about what happened. And see, before they develop it, before they make, build the houses there, they can either put on one side or the other side rather than directly in that, 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 that corner there. That's what I'm looking at. I know that, I know reality is everybody worrying about, you know, that, but you know, what if, what if we did that before we developed it, we wouldn't have that situation again. I don't want to create, we don't, I, would, I wouldn't want to create that problem there if I'm on the board, but you know, you know, everybody got, everybody got opinion. That's my opinion. Yeah. Well, we have a choice of um, going ahead and calling for a motion uh, and see where the other commissioners or if any other commissioners have questions. Um, and if we have enough nays, you know, we can um, call for a change in this um, sketch plan. Um, I think, you know, with this in mind, uh, I am going to call for a motion. I'm gonna ask one more time. I'm gonna call for a motion. I was sorry, I was on mute. I, I made a motion to approve the sketch plan as presented. Okay, I have a motion to approve as presented. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Hill has seconded it. We have a motion and a second to approve as submitted. I call for and ask for any uh, discussions. Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye and raise your hand. Aye. aye. You don't see me, this bit agreed. Aye. Okay, and those that are against, nay. Nay. And hand, good. Okay, we have one nay and the, the remainder are uh, yes. So, uh, Mr. Moses, it does pass. I appreciate your your, your concern. And I think you can probably talk further with uh, Mr. Owens and his development team and and, and get a, a stronger comfort level with that. But I know you're looking out for the citizens. You're not just, um, you're not just trying to, you know, bring up questions that are not relevant and, and thank you for that. All right. Um, with that said, um, we have nothing left on the agenda tonight. And Mr. Moses, I'm gonna call on you one more time. I call, or a motion. Move that we adjourn. You the man. Um, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. 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 Thank you. And um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. And we are adjourned. Thank, Thank you. you. All the commissioners for what you do.